Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video today. Um, continue out where I left off on in Joel chapter two. Uh, one of the um, you know amazing verses uh, in chapters and in, in books in the Bible, I believe, in terms of the Second Advent, um, Armageddon, and um, you know how the restoration of Israel will take place, and how. And of course, God is going to bring His people back under His control, uh, which you know, which is a part of um, what I believe the tribulation is really all about. Um, and then certainly there'll be some, you know, punishing of the world and the Antichrist system and and all of that that is set up at the same time. So, one of the things you'll find in in the Bible is that. Um, what looks like a musical instrument before the verses start, it, it shows you where the paragraphs begin. And, and I don't know if you ever pay attention to those those paragraph markers uh, or marks that are placed in the Bible. Uh, but they're placed at very strategic places sometimes. And, and I'm going to show you a few examples of that here. Um, so we're going to be looking at Joel chapter 2. Um, and we'll start at verse 11 and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it so who can survive it essentially um, the expression his army that you see there in verse 11 of Joel chapter 2 um, causes some problems among scholars um, there's a similar expression called my great army and I think that that's what they're expecting to see here and that occurs, that occurs in verse um, and other places in the Bible of course um, and so the assumption here is that, that, that this is um, made that both phrases refer to the same army army. So, my great army is a reference um, to Joel 2 and 1 through 11, and, and it's a, in reference to the locusts um, of, that are found in that chapter. And so they seem, they seem to get confused here, a lot of the, um, the uh, scholars and, and people that look at this. Um, and it's interesting um, that they miss this cross-reference. Um, so there's a connection between Joel 1, 4 through 6 and Revelation 9, 1 through, 1 through 11 so what they'll make what their mistake is is they'll make Joel 2, 1 through 10 a reference to the army of the devil and the Antichrist which is, the, which is not correct but the army of Joel 2 um, verses 1 through 11 I just read verse 11 there, is not locusts, it's the people. Verse 2, you can see that. A day of darkness and of, of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and, and a strong. So you can see it's people, and, and it's also men. Verse 7, they shall run like mighty men. Um, they're not just horses without any faces, or you know, they're, they're, they're men. Um, it's a people. Um the horses have riders, they're horsemen. They're horsemen. Verse 4, the, the appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and the horsemen, so shall they run. And so this is a direct, this passage um, at, at 2.11 is a direct cross-reference to Habakkuk. Um, Habakkuk 3.11 through 15, and also Revelation 6.12-17, and, and Revelation 19.11 through 16. It's the body of Christ at the second advent is what it is and um, verse 12 starts starts a new paragraph and again that's the paragraph sign that's important it's the restoration of Israel starts starts there um, verse 18 um, is, is is another um, new paragraph and it's it's the signs that come before the second advent is, or that we need to look for um, it starts at verse 18 and again at 21 there's another paragraph break so these are important to understand 
verse, verse 20, uh, it talks about another army. Uh, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into the land barren and desolate. The northern army is Satan's, um, is the Antichrist army, essentially, that you can find in Ezekiel 39, 1 through 21. And there are three, again, there are three separate armies in here. We saw it at, at chapter, um, excuse me, verse 11 of Joel chapter 2, and we saw verse 20 of Joel chapter 2, and there's another reference at, um, of an army as well. 25, and I will restore to you the years of the locust have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar. Now that's, that verse 25 um, is in reference to the locust. Uh, that we talked about um, earlier in um, in other places, and so you have to understand. You know, God is preparing to restore Israel. God is going to to bring to their attention that they denied their the, Jesus Christ. He's going to obviously have two witnesses and the 144, and he's going to deal with the true people of Israel. And he's going to deal with it when he battles the Antichrist um, as well at the Battle of Armageddon. And we are going to, like I said, be riders on that horse. We are the horsemen. Uh, we are his army at uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 11. It's a beautiful, beautiful set of things. And it's a lot of, there's a lot of confusion, um, even by um, some pretty famous set of writers. Um, like the Schofield board, which uh, puts out the Schofield stuff, is confused on the same stuff that I mentioned. And it's something that, um, you know, you have to distinguish and go verse by verse. It's just an example of how complex the Bible is. Um, but, you know, it's one of the things that God looks most forward to is to have Jesus Christ set up his millennial kingdom. And we, we will certainly get to be a part of it. Um, how is this relevant to us? You know, it's we're not sure if the rapture is going to happen, uh, you know, tomorrow or two years from now or ten years from now, hopefully soon. Um, again, I had a, a video on imminent rapture. If you want to take a look at that, uh, just a couple days back, maybe it may have just been yesterday. I forget, but essentially, the imminent ra the rapture is imminent, and we're looking for the soon return of the King. Second Timothy, or excuse me, Titus two thirteen. Our blessed hope and we know that the hour is is soon and uh, it's at the door and um, if you're not saved you know now's the time to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ believe with your heart confess with your mouth to salvation sanctify your soul with the free gift of, that Jesus gave to us on that cross 2,000 years ago when he shed all his blood for the remission of your sin he became um, the sacrificial lamb that we needed to be right with God. Once saved, always saved. Past, present, future sins, all forgiven. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, God bless.